Hey y'all, I'm Jesse Peterson with Let's Make Art and I teach art journaling. Today I have a cool couple of things I want to share with you and the name of this video is called Lanya. And um, it's kind of a funny word. L-A-W-N-Y-O-P. Mm, it's spelled like this, <laughs> which is kind of crazy, yeah. right? If, you ever, if you've never seen this word, I'm going to tell you about it. In South Louisiana, where a lot of my family lives and I used to live down on the Gulf Coast, Lanyap is a word that they use for a little extra, a little bonus, a little something. Um, it is a word that means, yeah, a little extra. So like if you got 12 donuts, you got 13. That was like a little extra something they throw in there. Or if like a kid goes to the store to get some groceries and a couple of things for their parents, they would get a little piece of candy or something extra while they're there. It's just a fun word, and I thought it would be a fun way to describe this sort of video that we're going to do where we're adding on to the things that um, we've already been doing in our art journal for this month. So let's talk about that. <clears throat> Mark Twain actually refers to Lanyap. I was and, just Googling it to yeah? see if there's any facts. <clears throat> okay, so you can, you can tell about Mark Twain while I get us set up here. Okay, so let's see. a difficult word to spell. <laughs> this is how to spell it right here. It's, um, it's a kind of crazy spelling. It's actually a Spanish word um, that means, well, that is like, it's called, uh, I can't remember. I know it's Spanish, but then the, in Louisiana, they kind of gave it a French spelling. So it says, despite its <laughs> Italian look, lanyap is actually a modified form of a Louisiana French Creole term that derives from the New World Spanish as la napa. Oh, la napa? A gift. Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, okay, so we made great. this card this month, and we made this card this month, and we made this little pocket with all these fun things, and I'm just flipping through my journal to show you some other things that we did. I'm gonna show you how to do some simple backgrounds like this today. Um, I'm gonna choose my favorite one of these, and we're gonna do a background for that. I wanted to show you that you can also take some of the bigger, some of the smaller concepts like this Be Brave card right here and do it larger in your journal and have fun with that. So I have some of these cut and ready to go if we decide we want to do that. Um, <clears throat> and then I have a couple of photos I want to paste in. This was our postcard that we did for Let's Make Art Matter. You could also do another version of that in your journal. It's all up to you. <clears throat> so. Where do we want to start here? I think we'll do this fun little background with some watercolor first. Oh yeah. And then we can get into, you know, some of these details. What I like about this kind of stuff is it's repetitive and I find repetitive marks kind of soothing and nice to just do and kind of, I don't know, clock out, chill, just be in the moment. That's what I like about the repetitive marks. So that's what we're going to do first. Um, let's see, I'm going to put this aside. Which one do you like better, Keenan? I did a perfect is boring or ditch your comfort zone. I like ditch your comfort zone. Well, we've definitely been ditching our comfort zone lately. hundred so, percent. So I think that's good too. All right. So um, if you have our subscription box, you might've gotten this Jane Blundell or Cesc Ferre palette of watercolor. You can use whatever you have on hand at home, um, whatever watercolor you got. But this is what I'm gonna use today, these little cards. And I used a lot of my Jane Blundell, so maybe I'll use some more of the Cesc or CF for short. I'm going to start with yellow. So mm. Hans yellow is on both of these. But you mm. can use whatever yellow you have available. And I'm just going to get that wet. I'm using a number eight Princeton select brush. I'm going to turn this a little bit to the right. Make sure it's visible on both cameras here. And I'm just going to do these little lines. We bring your head back just a little bit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the yellow might be hard to see on camera, but when we start changing, changing the color. If you want to bring see. it more to the left, if it's more comfortable. Yeah. There you go. Yellow is such a happy color. Gosh. It is it's so fun.
And these, yeah, these were pen with marks are just so nice. This is, you can be doing this while you're watching a show, even just hanging out. I'm gonna add just a little bit of yellow ochre, or you could also use the, that more gold color on the other palette. I'm gonna start having this yellow kind of darken a little bit. Let's see, get some more water on this guy. So I still have the Hans yellow there, but I'm just starting to mix in a little bit of the darker yellow. Whatever darker yellow you have is fine. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna keep going. And I'm just pressing my, oh, that was a lot of water. Um, brush down to kind of get that same shape over and over again. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. And they don't have to like line up with the one before, you can kind of put them in between. Does that make sense? Like. There's yeah. two, and you put that Staggered. one. Staggered. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Staggered. Stag red. How's that word spelled? I don't know if that's probably word. close to long, 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 long in and up. Okay, now we can start mixing a little orange in there. I'm gonna use that. You can do the panel orange, or you could use that this transpiral orange. I'm mixing it with the yellow so that we'll get a little transition going. Then I'll just use straight orange after that. And these can vary in size, like they can be a little smaller, a little bigger, no big deal. This isn't, this isn't like a stressful thing. This is just a, I'm having fun, making marks, just Relaxing. having a good time. Yeah. I could read what Mark Twain wrote about Lanyap for you while oh, you do this. Oh, I would this. love that. So Lanyap. And this is on twainquotes.com. I don't know how legitimate this is, but it's what I've found. Lanyap, we picked up one excellent word, a word worth traveling to New Orleans to get. A nice, limber, expressive, handy word, lanyap. They pronounce it the way it's spelled here, lanyap. So I'm not sure how, now I don't know how to pronounce it. It is Spanish, so they said. We discovered it at the head of a column of odds and ends in the, I can't say this word, Picayune. 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 The That's first place day. Louisiana. Heard 20 people use it the second, inquired what it meant the third, adopted it, and got facility in swinging it the fourth. <laughs> got facility in swinging it. Yes. Fourth. I like that. Said it has a restricted meaning, but I think the people spread it out a little when they choose. It is the equivalent of the 13th roll in a baker's dozen. Mm -hmm. It is something thrown in gratis for good measure. The custom originated in the Spanish quarter of the city. If the waiter in the restaurant stumbles and spills a gill of coffee down the back of your neck, mm -hmm. he says for lanyap, sa, <laughs> and gets you another cup without extra charge. Yeah, they're just throwing that in. A little extra coffee for you, no big deal. We won't charge you for that. That's nice. <laughs> Um, there's a restaurant in New Iberia where I used to work right across the street called Lanyap, and I always thought it was a cute name for a restaurant, too. Lanyap. That part of the world is definitely a mul <clears throat> melting pot for culture, like just so many cool things all together. And this shape is kind of looking like a little bit of a raindrop. Oh, yeah. In some spots. Do you see that? How it kind of looks like a raindrop? Something like a teardrop. Yeah. Teardrop, raindrop. Same thing, probably. Okay, so I mixed in a little bit of red and orange. Now I'm going to kind of go straight red. You could use the rose red, or you could use the scarlet, which, whichever you want. I just mixed both of them up, so that's all right. I need a little bit more in there. There we go. Oh, so fun. And you can play around with this. This can be all <clears throat> 
one color if you wanted. You could do a transition like we're doing. <clears throat> what if you did this over some writing? That'd be interesting. Over the writing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's going to give your page some dimension. And I started out with a yellow, and I'm going to red into this kind of rosy color because um, <clears throat> I thought it would be fun to be the opposite direction of how this went. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you could also do it the other way. Okay, I think we'll do one more row of this kind of rosy red, and then we'll start adding a little blue into it and get it to go purple. See, and I'm not so straight now, it's kind of doing that. That's all right. That makes it interesting too. Okay, let's, let's do some cerulean blue. Cool. Just a little bit at first, and then we'll put some more in there. <clears throat> I like that color. Yeah, it's kind of just a little violet. It's still kind of red, but just with a little bit of blue in there. Now we can add a little bit more. Those the same colors? Yeah, I was just trying to put a little bit more blue in there, but I didn't get enough, so it's still the same. We're getting the same result. That's <laughs> all right. Let's put a little more blue in. See, that's a little bit more on the blue side of purple. And then <clears throat> add a little bit more blue. Totally we got. subtle but it's changing see that yeah satisfying so now I'm just going to use straight cerulean blue with whatever I had left on my brush and then I might just give this a little bit of cobalt blue just darken it up a little You could use cobalt blue or whatever you got. Ultramarine blue would be getting nice there. Or a French ultramarine. So this is the cobalt. Now I'll do a little ultramarine. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Oh, so satisfying. All done. There we go. Okay. I'm liking that. Let's let that dry for a second. Okay, this is looking dry now, so I think we're safe. I'm actually going to take my notebook out of my... Holder? Yeah. What is that, a folder? It's like a holder, folder. A sleeve? It's called a traveler's notebook. Oh. But it's pretty cool because it'll hold a couple of your art journals in it. And um, oh, and it's polka dotty. Oh, yeah, it's polka dotty. We have this one. We have a blush one. Oh. I think we might have another color. I think we do, actually. Pictures should be taken this 
last weekend. Oh, the uh, yeah. So check back for other. Yeah. Um, what I like about it, well, let's just say really quick. It has these little pockets, so I've been carrying my little cards around in there and little scraps of paper I think I might use. And my stickers. Does it are have in a calculator? Here. No, there's no calculator. <laughs> we don't need any calculators in our art. Come on, Keenan. I don't know. This is a math class. Doing number art. This is art journal class. So anyway, okay, I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna actually use my clips to hold this down. We'll make it a little easier for us. Okay. So we got this background. So you like to ditch your comfort zone, right? So then we can just put that on there. I mean, I don't like to. I just feel like that that's a good message to we ditch were trying, your comfort zone. We were trying to decide between perfect is boring or ditch your comfort zone. I'm I like ditch your too. comfort zone. That's, that's the only way we really know how to grow. Yeah, it's true. And I like how the scale changed. Like some of these are a little smaller and they got a little bigger and went from good straight to kind of not straight. <laughs> <laughs> just fine. Have fun with it. But So there's one idea for a background that you can do. Let's do... <clears throat> we'll do a little watercolor wash on this one. Get my clips in place. This is my daughter, Ruby. And I want that photo in our in there. And someone asked in the groups how to do what colors I use for this watercolor wash right here. <clears throat> and I use cerulean blue, sap green, and then a little Hans yellow and some orange. So I'm gonna just do that same thing right here for you guys so you can see how to do that. Normally we film these ahead, but because this was the first lawn yop, really wanted to try to do it a little bit later so we could see how you responded to the projects. And I'm so glad that we did because now I can do this because it was requested. Nice. Okay, so cerulean blue first. I'm using my oval mop brush and I'm just getting this paint off my card and putting it on my butcher tray. You can use it straight off there. I just want you to be able to see it really well. I'm going to start with that. Just get that in there like that. Get that paint off there. Here we go. Watch your head. Okay, so we just had a little blue in there like that, right? I might take it somewhere there too. You could add the little bit of the darker blue if you like. Might show up a little more. There you go. Mm. I'm liking that. Just a little. Then we can do sap green. It's got a smidge of it left on here. And this doesn't have to be like a perfect transition or anything. You can just kind of go for it. This isn't watercolor paper, so it's not gonna act like watercolor paper, but it will allow you to do a little, a little bloom here and there. Just, but they're just more slight. And let's do Hans yellow is on both cards, so you're safe with that one. And this mop brush holds a lot of water, which yeah, is Yeah, that nice. thing looks like it's thirsty. Or well hydrated. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which one. I kind of like it when it has a lot of water because it sort of pools and spots, which is cool. Yeah. And you can kind of push it around. Now, if you push it a lot, you might get a little bit of what I did here, which is fine. It kind of pulled the paper up a little bit, put too, a little too much water on there, but that's all right. It'll have a different effect and I'm okay with that. It's our art journal, it's just having fun. Yeah. I'm gonna grab a little orange. Not a math journal. Yeah, it's not a math journal, this is not math <laughs> Who class. Who needs calculators? Speaking of other classes, how's your PE class going? How are your, uh, <laughs> your push-ups? <laughs> you you set a goal. PE, I yeah. did set a goal. So I reached my push-up goal. I stopped doing my burpee goal because my knees hurt entirely too much. Now, explain a burpee for those of us who don't um, A burpee is when you exercise. are standing and you drop your hands to just outside of your feet and then you kick your feet back as though you're going to do a plank. Then you do a push-up and you go back up, kick your feet back up to your hands and then you stand up. So you're essentially in a squat position and you jump. 
and you lift your hands up. So it's a full body movement. That sounds intense. It, it, it can be if you do them consistently. But I stopped doing those because my body hurt me. So I'm back to push-ups. Oh, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can understand that decision. I'm thinking I want this photo to be on here, and I think I want that paint to go out a little bit wider. <clears throat> it's not too late for that. You can do it. I'm going to get some more sap green on my brush. I'm going to put it in there with that little bit of yellow, and I'm just going to have it come out a little wider there. And we got this pool of color, so I'm just going to drop that in. It's nice. fine. Now I'm going to add a little more yellow. That's nice, because then it got a little bit more intense, which is good. Add some more orange to the sides here. Drop that in a couple spots, and we'll just let the watercolor soak into the paper and do its thing. You could add a little more blue if you want. Oh, I had a little orange on my... If that happens and you don't like it, you can always just blot it out. Make sure you rinse your brush a little better. <laughs> so I like doing these things on camera because then it's like, hey, if you did this, this is what you do. I'm not mad. I'm not being precious. Just having fun. Yeah, there you get that blue in there. All right. Let's let that dry for a second. Okay, this is just about dry here. Um, and I'm going to put this photo on top of it. And this photo is, um, it's just a, a funny thing that happened this month, earlier in the month. <clears throat> it was um, Dr. Seuss Day at school, and we were having a rushed morning on the way to school. We couldn't find our library book or papers we needed to get signed. And I was rushing, and I realized that I didn't take a picture of my daughter in her funny hat on hat day. And I turned around to take one. And I realized I just need to calm down and like just, you know, everybody's fine, everything's good, we're okay. Um, and I dropped her off and then I looked back at my camera and this photo, because the way the light was coming in the window, just made a little rainbow in there. And because we had already been making these cool cards earlier in the month, um, looking for the rainbows, being brave, it was just a neat little, I don't know, opportunity for me to see a rainbow in a cool way and so I was really excited for that and <clears throat> with everything that's been going on it is just a good reminder that we can find the rainbows you know um, and now I'm going to be even more excited to have those rush school mornings back so I definitely want that in my journal and you can use photos from your um, week or your month or something significant that kind of goes along with things just paste it in there and you've got yourself a page. And I just love this with this sentiment that um, lucky is a state of mind. I just like being able to remind myself of that. So we've got our watercolor washed with a photo. So that's an option that you can do in your journal. Um, so we got that one. We can do this one and this background really quickly on a separate piece of paper. I'll show you how I did that. And we'll wrap this up. Okay, so I'll just use this paper right here. So this one, it looks complicated, it's not really. I used this pin, the Fudunosuke pin, and I just started at the top doing little loops. And I did some, I wanna make sure I don't draw on the thing here. Yeah. There we go. Some just little loops, you can do big loops, little loops. It's actually fun if you just kinda of make them however you want. See how it just went bigger and then smaller? And then after you get a row of those going, let's do a whole row. We'll just do a whole row real fast or slow. You know, you can enjoy this repetitive time. When it comes down a little. Okay, and then we're gonna come back in between some of these and just keep going 
and you can make one bigger and then one smaller just however you want they're kind of like I don't know like uh what does this look like you know scales yeah scales like dragon scales yeah dragon scales <laughs> I just now I can imagine a dragon coming to share some rainbows. One row of scales at a time. Mm-hmm. And you could get really tiny, like that. Yeah. And you could get really big in other spots. And they don't all have to like cross back and forth. You can you can do whatever you want. Now you can see that's kind of how you do it. You can see how some of these, you know, are a little they're imperfect and I get bigger in spots and smaller in other places. But overall, overall, it just is a nice background for your card like this. So that's how you do that. Pretty easy, right? This one, I actually did the watercolor first. Tricky, right? Ooh. So let's do that again. Oh, I just love backgrounds because it's like no pressure. You're just having a good time. And it just pairs so well with these cards that we made because we had no pressure making the cards. Little artwork, you know, at a time, quick finishes. And then just putting these together is just so satisfying as a page. Okay, so you can see I kind of did a little swoop like that of color. This is a darker blue. And now I'm going to use the cerulean blue. It's a little lighter blue. And it got a little thicker. That's all right. We can do a little Hans yellow here. Just water bring that, that down a bit to more. the left a little bit, and then watch your mind your noggin. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we can do a little yellow. We'll let that dry for a second. And then I'll show you how I just went over it with my pen. And I'm using this same Peter Nusuke pen for all of this. Um, and these are things you can do. You can stop and then come back to it, you know, and keep working on it while you're waiting for something else to dry. Like, I like working on some separate pieces of paper that I paste into my journal because while I'm waiting for one thing to dry, I can be doing something else. And sometimes I get a little nervous about making something right in my journal, like I'm gonna mess it up, so I might practice, and then if the practice works out, just paste it right in. So I love that. It's however you wanna work, whatever you enjoy doing. But I just thought, I can keep doodling on this while we're waiting for that to dry, and you can see how we do these scales. This is gonna end up turning out to be a really cool random piece of paper with the word lanyap on it. Oh yeah! <laughs> I was just thinking this is like a, throwaway test page, but yeah, it could also go in your journal. That's cool. I like that, Keenan. Okay, that's looking drier. So yeah, then you can just come back in. And trace the lines of the colors that you did. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to line up perfect. It's actually kind of fun when it doesn't match up all the way. This one's still a little wet, but we'll see what we can do it. And that's how you do that. Nice. And you can do thicker or thinner. You can see I got really thin in some spots and thicker in other places. Just whatever. That's another background technique for you. Um, in the collage paper, this is in there. This is the original. I just wrote a word and then I did the colors around the word until I got that shape. So that's something you can do. I'm going to cheat and just put the real one that I made in my journal. <laughs> I think I might put that, might put that on this page there. And one thing I want you to notice is, oh, we're going to do this. Let's do this one. I'll show you this one. So this one, I used the Tombow marker. I actually saw a pattern like this on a rug, and I thought it was cool. So I just imagined a little circle in the middle, and I kind of did this little design coming out from the circle. And it wasn't a perfect circle by any means. Like that. And then then I just did shorter ones around that. 
Oh. And you could do this. That's another one of those satisfying move ones where it's real simple, but it's. Yeah. Fun and I to just watch develop. I just kind of liked it because it looked like, um, like the way that light pool, like shadows. Oh light. yeah. I don't know. I just thought it echoed the be a light thing. Kind of makes me think of a kiwi for some reason. Oh. And the other side of the brush might work better for this, actually, because you kind of get the same line thickness. And maybe this one looks a little crazy by itself, but then when you do a couple and that shape is repeated on your page, it looks cool. You know? Totally. Just have fun. Just having fun with it. Maybe I want that one to be a little longer to match that. Let me put one more there. Yeah, I think I did that whole page with this other side of the marker, which I like. Let me go back over that one. Yeah, so that's something you can repeat. For this card, I actually used the, and you guys saw me do this in another video, but just in case you haven't seen that video, go back and check it out. But I put some marker, on my butcher paper, I mean, on my butcher tray. I don't know why I said paper. <laughs> <laughs> said that in the other video too. <laughs> and you can kind of just get that gray around with just using your gray from the brush kind of thing. So that's how I did that. And I drew this little part with, um, I mixed watercolor to make that color. And then this yellow is from the um, torn part of the yellow page. And I just trimmed that out like a light bulb and wrote Be A Light on it. So that's an easy one I you like can try. That. So one thing that I wanted you to notice is, oh, and in the beginning, this is a whole full, like half the sheet of this paper that I just cut and pasted in. Depending on how you use your collage paper, you might be able to do that. And this card has blue watercolor that I just swished back and forth. And then I cut this part out of my paper and stuck that on there and then I just put that right on my journal like that so that's a finished page nice. so let's flip through it now it's almost done and um, we can decide if we want to put something on the front or not the old journal flip through well journal journal flip through here Coming we go to theaters near you <laughs> so you can be brave the world needs what you got maybe not coronavirus but everything else <laughs> Positive attitude. <laughs> Cultivate kindness. And I loved that we were all making these cards and sharing them, and we can continue to share them when things are better. And then be a light. We can all find ways to be a light. Ditch your comfort zone. Keenan liked that one. Oh, yeah, we we're going to do something with this. We'll come, I'll, I'll work on that, but that's almost done, so it'll look something like that. Maybe I'll do some journaling around it. I so like that, too. We'll leave that. It's just a... You can try mess around with scale, like this one we did small, and then we just did that same idea bigger. And then this one, using a photo and a wash with the card, which is nice, a little rainbow ruby. I like that quote, that's nice. And then I'm just gonna drop this in there like that. I might make a background for this one too. And I wanted to show you this one. <clears throat> this one is pretty easy. I just did some um, tape and taped it off. And then I used my stickers to make this. So it kind of looks like one of those light boxes that you can buy at the craft store. I actually used to work for a company that made those, so that's what I was thinking about. Um, and then it's like how you slide those little letters in like for like the uh, movie, you know, oh, yeah. the, what's it called? Marquee, marquee. So it's like yeah, marquee lighting. I didn't lighting. know the name of it. That's it. Well, I think it's called marquee, right? When you I, put the letters up, I'll like the old, old school movies. I did it at Wendy's. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so you can kind of do that sort of technique with your cards and um, your stickers, which is, could be fun. Maybe I'll move this over to that page and I might use that on the front. And then this last one is another photo um, that I took at the grocery store recently when there wasn't very much on the shelf. <laughs> um, and I think when I look back at this, and that's the neat thing about journaling, I'll be able to see this with fresh eyes. And the next time I go to the grocery store and it's fully stocked, I will be um, more grateful than I've ever been before because I've had this experience. So seeing with fresh eyes is something that we can do when we look back at our memories and our journaling. And I think that 
this might be a fun thing for the front of my journal. When you put love out in the world, it travels. One thing I wanted to give, you, give yourself permission, you don't always have to put something on every page. You can give your eye a rest. So for this journal, I actually just focused for the most part on doing something on the right side of the page. So you can give yourself permission to do that. You can do it back and forth like I did, where there's some on both and then some not. It's up to you. I hope you enjoyed making this journal with us. Um, I hope that some of these repetitive marks are fun to do and relaxing and that you will share what you made with us. So if you want to do a flip through journal, um, a flip through video of your journal, you can share it on our Facebook group, which is Let's Make Art Journals or over on our, um, you can, over on Instagram, you can tag us there and we would love to see it. Thank you so much for making this with us. We'll see you next time.